not 1.30. La Chambre abordera. The House will now deal with private members' business in the order indicated on today's order paper. Scarborough Rouge Park, the Mr. Anasandarangiri, seconded by Mr. Saroya, moves that in the opinion of the House, the government should recognize the contribution that Tamil Canadians have made to Canadian society, the richness of the Tamil language and culture, and the importance of educating and reflecting upon Tamil heritage for future generations by declaring January every year Tamil Heritage Month. Debate. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak in support of my private member's bill, Motion M24, Tamil Heritage Month, celebrating the contributions of Tamil Canadians in our country. Canada is truly enriched by the Tamil language, culture, and history. Multiculturalism is indigenous to Canada, Mr. Speaker. Canada has always had a plurality of languages and peoples living here since time immemorial. Any discussion on a settler community in Canada cannot start without first acknowledging and thanking the traditional keepers of this land. We are grateful to our Indigenous peoples, and as we are here, gathered here on the traditional unceded lands of the Algonquin people, let us reflect on the enormous collective responsibility of all Canadians towards <clears throat> building a more equitable country, one that respects our Indigenous peoples. I'd like to thank the Conservative Party, the New Democrats, and the Green Party for supporting my motion. I'd also like to thank our Minister of Canadian Heritage, the government, my Liberal colleagues, and our respective staff for their hard work, ongoing feedback, and support for this motion. We wouldn't be here today had it not been for the municipalities of Markham, Stouffville, Ajax, Pickering, Oshawa, Whitby, Brampton, Toronto, Ottawa, and York Region, and school boards such as the Toronto District School Board that took a lead in entrenching Tamil Heritage Month in their respective jurisdictions. I want to particularly acknowledge the province of Ontario for recognizing Tamil Heritage Month in 2014. I wish to thank the many individuals and organizations in the Tamil community and many allies of the community for their hard work over the years that have allowed us to bring this to the national stage. Except for Indigenous peoples, all of us in Canada have come together in this great country from around the world. In Canada, our diversity makes us stronger. In many ways, it is this diversity that unifies us and brings us closer. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms ensures that no matter who you are in Canada, you have the right to be yourself, to keep your identity and culture without being any less Canadian. Our late Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau established Canada's official multiculturalism policy in 1971. This bold action opened Canada's doors to the world. With this policy, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau saw multiculturalism as the most powerful tool for, and I quote, preserving human rights, developing Canadian identity, strengthening citizenship, and reinforcing Canadian unity. Multiculturalism was later entrenched in Section 27 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and in 1988, the Multiculturalism Act went into effect. Our Prime Minister said it best, a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. In Canada, Mr. Speaker, there is space for us all. Mr. Speaker, the Tamil language dates back 500 BC. It is considered to be one of the oldest living ancient languages in the world, with a written tradition dating back to the same period. This linguistic tradition ties Tamils to a deep and unbroken cultural history that stretches generations. The Tamil language is recognized throughout the world. It has received recognition from India as a classical language. Singapore declared it an official language. It is a national language in Sri Lanka and has been recognized as the official state language of Tamil Nadu. India Arasanil Sammaliyahavam, Singapore Arasanil Achimaliyahavam, Ilangayil Tesiyamaliyahavam, Tamil Nadu Arasin Archimaliyahavam, Ulahamalam Arindat Mali, Tamil Mali. There is a very important proverb in classical Tamil poetry 
in Tamil that reads, Yadam Ore Yavaram Kalir, meaning every country is my country and every person is my kin. The transnational Tamil experience has meant that Tamils have moved extensively over the years. The origins of the Tamil people can be traced to South Asia, but they started to migrate all over the world, first in search of better opportunities, then as indentured laborers, and more recently, for safety and security. Tamils initially went to the British colonies, such as South Africa, Malaysia, Singapore, and also to places like Mauritius. In the 20th century, Tamil migration led to significant permanent communities being established in Europe, Australia, and Americas. Tamils are a diverse people. It means you can practice any faith, come from any corner of the world, and still be a proud Tamil. Tamils have called Canada home since the 1940s. However, the first real community didn't come together until the 1960s. Tamils initially came as students from different parts of the world, such as India, South Africa, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka. Many went back to their home countries after their studies, while many more ended up settling in Canada. This was followed by professionals, some of whom settled in towns across the country, from Belleville, Ontario, to Dawson Creek, British Columbia, and anywhere in between. The first recorded Tamil cultural organization in Canada was the Bharati Kalamandram, established in 1969, and this was followed by the Tamil Ilam Society of Canada in 1978. The community took shape in many urban centers, including the Greater Toronto Area, Montreal, Ottawa, Windsor, Halifax, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Vancouver. By 1983, there were 3,000 Tamils living across the country. The most significant arrival of Tamils in Canada began in 1983 as refugees from Sri Lanka sought safety from persecution. As a response to the anti-Tamil programs on the island of Sri Lanka, and due to the hard work of the community at that time, Canada opens its doors to refugees by establishing a special measures program. It enabled Canadians to sponsor their extended family members and normalize status to refugees already in the country. Due to ongoing violence on the island, Sri Lanka became a top refugee producing country for many years. Mr. Speaker, Tamils have taken extraordinary risk to come to Canada over the years. Like many refugees, they bet everything for the promise of a better life where they would no longer have to live in fear or be treated as second class citizens. While waves of refugees came to Canada by boat, many more recent refugees came to Canada by conventional means with the support of their families. In 1986, 155 Tamil refugees came to our country seeking safety off the coast of St. Schatz, Newfoundland. They, they were saved at sea by Captain Gus Dalton and his crew from Admiral Speech. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the first group of Tamil refugees that arrived by boat. While it is a celebration of the success of this community, it is also an opportune time to recognize and thank the people of Newfoundland for their generosity. Mr. Speaker, the next group of Tamils that came to Canada by boat did not receive as generous a welcome. As you're aware, on Wednesday, our Prime Minister issued a moving apology on behalf of our government for Canada's failure to welcome those arriving on board the SS Kamaga tomorrow in 1914. While Canada has come a long way in the last century since that incident, from time to time, our deeply buried prejudices have been allowed to surface. As a direct result of the war in Sri Lanka, two more boats carrying Tamil refugees, the MV Ocean Lady in 2009, carrying 76 Tamils, and MV Sunsea in 2010, carrying 492 Tamils, arrived off our western coast in Victoria, British Columbia. <clears throat> These refugees arrived and shared their stories of being victims of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. Thankfully, Canada did not turn these refugees away. However, we failed to understand their plight. From the moment they arrived, we treated these refugees as criminals, keeping hundreds of men, women, and even children in detention for several months. Many of these refugees continue to live in legal limbo today. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to meet with most of those who arrived aboard these two boats, and their stories are heart-wrenching. Just this month, I met a young man whose parents were killed when he was 10 years old, and he came to Canada on the MV Sunsea at the age of 19. Today, he's 26, thriving, and Canada is his home. 
It is a shared sense of history and perseverance that in many ways defines the Tamil community in Canada and around the world. Now I want to underscore the work of Tamil Canadians to conserve their language and culture. We have a number of very important organizations that work on promoting the Tamil language and culture. The University of Toronto under the leadership of the late Professor Chalva Kanaganayagam and more recently York University under the leadership of Professor Philip Kelly. The University of Windsor under the poet laureate of the Tamil community, Rudramuthi Cheren, have sparked a great deal of interest in advancing Tamil studies in Canada. Additional courses are continuing to be developed. Annual Tamil studies conferences, lectures and symposiums have attracted many local and international academics to our great country. Ultimately, there's a strong movement to establish a research chair in Tamil studies. The inter interdisciplinary study of the Tamil people, language and culture is further supported by awards such as the N. Sivalingam Award in Tamil Studies at York University and the Tamil Literary Gardens Essay Award. At a primary and secondary school level, there are many organizations that are teaching tens of thousands of students the precious Tamil language. Organizations such as Arivakam, Tamil Academy, and the many school boards offering Tamil heritage language classes. There are other programs that teach Bharatanatyam, Sangeetam, and other fine arts. Many young people undertake extensive training in these fine arts for their Arangetrams. I want to acknowledge the keepers and teachers, parents and grandparents for their hard work in instilling the love of the Tamil language, arts and culture in our young people. Tamil Moliyai Kalpavarukam, Karpinam Asriyarukam, Tamil Moliyaim, Kalayim Kalacharatayim, Tuli Tuliyaha, Utivaram Petorhalukam, Nandrisola Karma Patrakrain. Mr. Speaker, Nothing makes me prouder than to reflect on the enormous strides made by young Canadians. You will recall the recent story of a 17-year-old Prashantan Aruchanan, who is the first Ontarian to win the NHL Thurgold Marshall Scholarship. Or young professionals like Anusha Arlaya, a lawyer with our Department of Justice, who moved to Nunavut to work for legal aid for a period of time. And that of the recent winners of the Google Demo Days Game Changer Award, Knowledge Hook, led by Travis Rudnam. I'm equally inspired by the leadership undertaken by Tamil Canadians in giving back to our country. Geeta Murthy founded the South Asian Autism Awareness Center and has inspired much needed focus on autism. Devi Arasanayagam and Ravi Sridharan, who helped run the Fort York Food Bank, and Manjula Selvaraja, a successful entrepreneur and philanthropist. These achievements not only speak to the great contributions that Tamil Canadians currently make to our country, but gives us a glimpse into the future potential of this community. Mr. Speaker, I must confess, every time I go into a restaurant in a major city, I find myself peeking into the kitchen. More often than not, I see a very tired, middle-aged man at the kitchen working his second job. Inevitably, he will be Tamil. I will end up having a long conversation about how hard his daughter is studying. You can see the father's pride, but you can also see the enormous sacrifice in his eyes. Mr. Speaker, Tamil Heritage Month is a very important way for us to celebrate and recognize Tamil Canadians and their contributions to our society. Tamil Heritage Month in Canada is as much about being Tamil as it is about being Canadian. This means not just preser preserving the Tamil language and culture for future generations of Tamils, but also celebrating and instilling shared Canadian values and responsibilities. I'm confident that the Tamil Canadians will fulfill their historical obligations, especially to repair and reset the relationship with their indigenous brothers and sisters. From the labs of Goose Bay, the restaurants of Montreal, the financial towers of Toronto, the factories of Juan, the innovative hubs in Waterloo, to the oil fields of Alberta, and to the truckers of British Columbia. Tamil Canadians are a proud part of this country, and today our house will ensure that their experiences will forever be recognized each and every January from coast to coast to coast through recognizing Tamil Heritage Month. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments?